Beat my brother-in-law half to death Lost 20 bucks on his football bet But other than that We ain't nothing Just good old boys Good old boys We're all the same Ain't no way we'll ever change Ain't no harm by the things we do Or the trouble that we get into Other than a wild hair once in a while We can't help it, it's just our style Good old boys, it's all we'll ever be Hey, good morning. Good morning to you, sir. You're supposed to cough when we're not on the air. Well, I, I, it's natural. <laughs> In a lot of ways, the radio show is just an extension of an ongoing. It's like you have that group text that's just always there. We have this ongoing conversation. Sometimes there's an hour gap. Sometimes there's a five-hour gap when we actually sleep. But there's an ongoing conversation, a level of consciousness, and a realization of reality that exists between Ash and I that during a certain period of time of the day, you just get to listen in on. And we try to hit the highlights, but there's just, um, in our case, it's honestly a wokeness that has nothing to do with political wokeness. awake at this time of the day. Right. There you have it. We're the Wayne Carter Show. Welcome to the South Texas TV studio. I'm Ash Wade. He's Brent Carter. We're going to get a break from this heat as you look at the AT Deerlim Hay and Feed Store weather. You know, I was going to joke and say, we're waiting. Carter, we're just smarter than you. And the reality is we're not. No. The reality is we're not smarter than you. We try to get you to think about things differently. I don't honestly. Inject common sense. This is not things. false humility. We're not smarter than you. I think that because we're accountable to you, we stand here. We think about things more than you probably have time to think about them. That's the truth. There's things that happen that I think you and I go, well, what about? Well, what if? Well, the other guy just goes, do you see what happened? Fair enough. Fair enough. The Wayne Carter weather brought to you by the great folks at AT Dillon Feed. I don't think about this. I get it from my iPhone that I bought at the VCS companies. It's 80 degrees in Victoria, heading to a high today of 101. That means you're... Car thermometer is going to say it's about 105. Feels like 900 degrees. <laughs> it is absolutely the result of the greenhouse effect of all the water vapor in the air from the Pacific undersea volcano in last year. January of 2022. No doubt about no it. No doubt about it. NASA has reported you must follow the science. All volcanoes must be believed. That is what happened. Volcano lives matter. That's exactly right. There's my Aunt Betty. It's going to be a great week be because great Aunt week. Betty has checked in. On a Monday, getting things started, Mark Kurtz, Greg Garcia, H.R. Mallory, Jordan Glass, Junior Samples, Will Vincent, good morning, Diane Tippett, Judge Posey, Bobby Leister, good morning, Kendra Douglas, Scott Snow, Linda Christ, Patricia Nagel, Scott Tomko, David Glass, Marvin Mikus, Cody Bauman. There you go. And many, many more. Glad you're all joining us this morning. Those are just the ones that we see right off the bat. But uh, happy you're all here and uh, thrilled that you're here. Absolutely. So where do we where do we start? Because it was a wild weekend in sports, and I know a lot of folks will probably tune out. But it's a I think I think saddles reference, right? What in the wild wild <laughs> world of sports is going on here? Kinda. <laughs> You know, Astros split with the Yankees, which is no surprise. They didn't give Justin Verlander run support. It's almost like the same as it ever was with Verlander coming back and getting one run. But you got to give credit to the Yankees pitching. They pitched well. He didn't, and and Verlander didn't pitch badly. Um, You and I had the conversation last week. Jose Urquidy had a final tune-up rehab start. Down in Double A Corpus, should have had another one. And and bless his heart, you know, I had a guy on Twitter last night go, "You don't pay attention to a rehab start. You do if you give up nine hits and five earned runs on seventy six pitches. Yeah, and three I mean, and a third. If the Double A guys are pounding you, you're probably not, not Yankee ready. Stadium ready. Yeah, no. And uh, Urquidy was not. Now, to his credit, 
and to Dusty's credit, because I think this was the plan all along, J.P. France stood in the wings, came in, pitched three and a third of really, really good baseball. This yeah. kid is a player. Good thing he was in the bullpen because the rest of the bullpen kind of, eh. He picks up the win. It was five to one. You had a, it was, it was a one nothing Yankees uh, in like the third. Astros hit a three run shot. No, Jake Myers hit Jake a three Myers shot. hit a three run shot. His first then, two Then right? after that, Maldonado. This is turning into or, our impromptu, or, or rather early First State Bank Astros update. Right. And, and, and we will get to the First State Bank plug part of it. Patricia Nagel's listening in. We love First State Bank, First State Bank and Louise. For it really promotes what we love to talk about, which is the Houston Astros in sports. But Myers hits a three-run jack, and then Maldonado adds one after that. The Astros end up 5-1 for a while, and then Urquidy gets in trouble. And bases are juiced, and they bring in Phil Maton, who just really quickly walks two people to make it 5-3. to three. And at some point, jacks around, and it's 5-all. Later on, they bring in J.P. France, and France does a really fine job. I may be back. No, that's no. I'm right because at the end of the day, we scored the runs that put us ahead. Myers homered and Alvarez homered. Alvarez Make it five okay. to one. There you go. And um, after France pitched really well, and then we uh, finally got yeah. out of it with uh, with uh, Jose Abreu, and a hit by pitch and a couple of walk batters, and it was five to five after four. The Myers homered again, Maldonado homered, Wait, and then he gave Bray up a couple Brian of late Bray, runs, right? I believe so. Yeah, he pitched to end the game. At any rate, Dodger, I mean, Yankees had ba- uh, base runners and a chance to tie the game late. Late. And uh, Abreu did a nice job. He touched 100 a couple of times yeah. yesterday. Maton did not get charged a run because he inherited the runners. and. <laughs> Hector Neris did a good job again. I think he gave up one run. Yeah, Neris is pretty solid. He's pretty solid. They I like him. Bullpen is coming around. Montero's had a couple of decent outings. Dawn still thinks he needs to be sent. Uh, Urquidy clearly was not ready to pitch nope. in the big leagues again. And, and bless his heart. I mean, I like the guy. I like him a lot. But probably we're down could, to could have done Probably could have done a stint at AAA Sugar Land. Yeah, just to be game ready. Astros have now gone six and four over the last ten. The the uh, Rangers have gone seven and uh, seven, seven and three, three, but most importantly, have won six in a six row. Six in a row, yeah. and the Astros lucky to keep pace. Absolutely, two and a half back, two and, a half back and then yeah. you have to drop back another three and a half games to find the Angels, who are are the Mariners, who are now six games back. So and the Angels are reeling. James Nick Kurtz Rule checking says, in, Michelle Wilson Hawkins. Nick Nick Rule says, Who's older? Biden, Trump, or Dusty Baker? <laughs> I don't know, but D- Dusty's got less uh less scandal, and I think it involves those wristbands. First state uh, banking. I thought it involved the black gloves anywhere. that he was wearing all no, the last no longer, two years. No, nope, right? No. Nope. Friendliest bank anywhere. No longer looks like a serial killer. First state bank of Louise. Go in today. I tell you what, Caden has been doing a bunch of work for different people and, and collecting cash. Good for him. I'm gonna take him in. And I'm going to let him, I don't know, uh, I don't know. He might as well get a backpack. He's going to need one anyway. Well, and, but I don't know if your minor children can have their own checking account. But between us, he and I will get him a checking account. That way we can get him a debit card. So I'm excited about that. We're going to do that this week. Just get him a savings card. Then he has to actually go to the bank, pull the money out, and he'll decide right? whether or not he really wants to make that effort to pay or for get the him thing both. that he wants. Get him both, and he can do online banking for free. He can transfer money from his savings to his checking. He can manage. But if he his went money. in every day, he'd have to, or every time, he'd have to actually see the fine folks at First State Bank and say hi to Lolly when he walks in. There and you then go. Go see the, everybody else. There. Patricia, when she's in town, sometimes she's in Sugarland. They're opening a new branch up there. The friendliest bank anywhere. You know, being friendly and being capable has allowed them to expand. It's a funny concept, and not always. And it's not. And intertwined. You don't have Obama saying, you didn't build this bank. We built this bank. President Obama had a birthday the other day. There were lots of folks out giving How old his is he, birthday 62 wishes. 62 or something like that? I don't know. He, he'll be with us for a long time. Wow, well, he's still pulling the strings. No doubt about Anybody it. Anybody else find it weird? He's the only president that I can remember that actually continued to live in D.C. I mean, I know he bought that house out in Martha's Vineyard, but I think he's Did still Did you see over the weekend? He was in Michigan. And during his speech, 
a large contingent of folks were singing the alternative chant to Let's Go Brandon. They were singing the alternative, the FJB chant. And Biden goes, you see, I mean, Obama, you see, that's what I'm talking about. We're trying to have a conversation. And they're doing this. And they're just going, F Joe Biden. And who do you think was doing it? It's not a bunch of MAGA Republicans that were going to see Barack Obama speak in Michigan. No. Just Michiganers that are tired of it. Their jobs have left them. I hope that for once in our lives. Curious what they'd be paying a gallon of gas up there. It's got to be five, six bucks. Yeah. I hope for once in our lives that the American public that's as irritated as they claim to be gets out and votes in the most demonstrative manner ever. I hope. Instead of having, what do we average here? What what does Victoria County turn out in voter percentage? It's not twenty five. I I don't think it's that high. It's it's lower 15? than twenty five. If you have the ability, maybe to the last vote, election was a little bit better. I would love for Victoria County to vote in such a percentage that on the statewide level, don't even worry about the national level, but on the statewide level. The public says, wow, Victoria County has had it. What happens is we all know, we all know we live in a red, in a red County. We all know that the Republican nominee, whoever he may be, is going to win the presidential vote in our County. That's just the way it is. I want that to be by 80%. I want there to be so no right. doubt. According to the Secretary of State in 2020, 60% of our registered voters turned out to vote for the... Um, well, that would be good. For president? For president, yeah. Well, remember, you could do it by car. You could do it at Chick-fil-A. You could do it in the mail. But we've dropped off. It, 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 I mean, 44% turned out in 2022 in the midterms. The last two years have been high. We've been in the 30s and 40s and... Barely touching fifty five percent for presidential elections. So, right, voters voters are starting to turn out. I still think it's pathetic, but I'd rather inform voters than no than than people just going to vote just because. You got to figure. So many people, I think, just go vote so they can get that "I voted" sticker. The cool best way to media. vote is still in person on a ballot. How come when? And, you know, it, it's it's somewhat ironic when the U.S. is put in charge to oversee elections in lesser countries, third world countries, of which oh, yeah. have probably surpassed us in education, attainment, and achievement. And integrity. But how come when we go into these countries to begin their elections and oversee them and help them with elections, we don't. Tell them to build their intranet infrastructure. No. And use Dominion voting machines. No, we don't. It's paper ballots, boxes, secured. Because that's good enough for them. It should be good enough for us, to be honest. In one day. I don't understand if we can hire 87,000 IRS agents just because that number sounded cool. Why we can't ramp up and hire some more vote counters for one day? Hey, we'll give you a hundred bucks. Give you a hundred bucks to come in and count votes. Uh, the problem is, hundred bucks doesn't even buy your gas these days. I wouldn't do it for a hundred bucks. True story. But you got to wonder. I mean, you got you got to figure that voting online is just an invitation to get hacked. If nothing else, you could go in and totally discredit the entire vote. Linda Chris says, who thinks it's weird finding a dead body in your house? Not the Obamas, that's for sure. Was it in the house? I thought it was I thought the guy died paddle boarding in a lake outside Martha Vineyard or off, off the I coast. I think it was hyperbole. What is hyperbole? That's like uh the word of the day. It's an exaggeration. Is it? Yes. Hyperbole. <laughs> Exaggerated. Statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. So, see, I think 
that I was correct. <laughs> hyperbole. Is it hyperbole to uh, to think? Well, let's take our first break, and then let's we'll come back that. and, we and do my Obama. hyperbolic think thought of the day. There you go. Allen's record service, 578-6300, not hyperbole if you give them a call because chances are when you do, you need them. Nobody's calling Allen just say, hey, how are you, Allen? Not at 578-6300. They might call them on the side on a cell phone or something. But if you call 578-6300, you need Allen's record service. They are our go-to toe-to, so they should be yours as well because they just do it right. So if you're in a wreck today or you break down on the side of the road, give Allen's a call. They can also come and help you out. This time of year, bad on batteries. So it's yep. it's not a surprise that cars are not starting and cars are overheating. As your kid goes back to school, <clears throat> it may be time for that youngster to have a cell phone. The VCS companies, you don't have to buy your child an iPhone 15. They have all types of emergency type, small capability, very inexpensive, added to your bill, Phone options for a small child. You may so want to another thirty bucks for the peace of mind. Put a put a phone in your kid's backpack, just so that if nothing else, you can track him. <laughs> exactly. You know, you can have your life three sixty. Dawn knows where I am twenty four hours a day. I'm trying to think of where I was the other day. You know, I told you that one day I pulled over. There was traffic on Crestwood. Yeah. And she wanted to know why I was at Dairy Tree. There's. <laughs> I almost spilled my sherbet trying to answer her that I was waiting for a light. <laughs> exactly. Ice cream cone was melting fast as you were trying to talk to her. Um, I'm like, honey, I can't talk right now. You're making my phone sticky. Nothing but worse than Light 360. VCS companies can help you immensely. Don't forget the government has Light 360 on you 24-7. Don't forget. Courtesy of the Chinese Communist Party. Chestnut Furniture Company for over 100 years, 116 West Swan Lynn for the last 80. Bobby Leon and his family helping you and yours enjoy great furniture, best furniture, Timber-Pedic, Stearns & Foster, all the great brands you know and trust, all the great Whirlpool, products. Whirlpool, Maytag, you, appliances, American-made. Chesnick and Love make your house a home, and you just always do better at Chesnick. Get back into Veracruz today. Just because they're closed on the weekends, they cater. They do all kinds yeah, of stuff. They're busy. They're, they're not, busy folks, but today. I mean, Lee and Ida and Minnie don't take it off. Some of the others might no, get the weekend to kick back and relax. Not much. Nope. Veracruz open today. Get in and enjoy the best Mexican fair in town, period. period. And Palace enjoy Bingo, it. you don't have to wait until Wade and Carter night to go and have fun at Palace Bingo. We don't even know when our next one there is. There may be a can. change. It may <laughs> not. We both have obligations yeah. on Thursdays. Yeah. So it may it may be. Wade and Carter Wednesdays. Could I don't be know. Wade and Carter Wednesday. We'll have to figure this out. Yeah. Well, we don't want to compete with the Catholic Bingos, do we? I don't know. I think I think I think we could do it. So. Is it hyperbole when in the wake of Oregon and Washington leaving the Pac-12 and Arizona State and Utah heading to the Big 12 that I declared college football over as we know it? You did. You told me it was over. And the funny thing is, you and I have had this discussion off air for years, for quite a while, and we've yeah. been meaning to actually talk about it. But a lot of our listeners are like, "Oh, you're talking sports." Yeah. Well, this and, is other, than sports. And, and other things have come up that rise to the forefront. That whole Ukraine thing kind of cut into yeah. our sports talk. But the Pac-12 which at one time had won more national championships across the board than any other conference in the country and is home to my beloved Washington State Cougars and has been since the formation of the Pac-8. What is their uh, their After fight the, song is like, Give Peace a Chance or something? Whose? Washington State. Oh, heck no. <laughs> I'm not going to play it for you because I don't want to have to sing this morning. <laughs> give peace a chance. When the first three words of your fight song are fight, fight, fight. I like that. Yeah, there's no peace. There you go. Uh, at least we don't reference, you know, the school across the state, unlike some other schools that, uh, you know, have a complex. Do the Huskies talk talk negatively about the Cougs in their... Uh... No, I'm referring to, I think, one of the Texas schools. That oh, yes. Do that. Sure. I just found that weird. 
But anyway. <laughs> welcome, um, welcome to the madness. Yeah. Um, I think we're seeing the demise of college football. And I, I think it's – they're chasing the money and the short play here. Because – As much as a Apple Cup, Washington State, Washington football game may not appeal to the rest of the country per se, college football fans understand rivalry games. So a casual fan will tune into UW and Wazoo on a, on a Friday afternoon or a Saturday from snowy Pullman, Washington on Fox as the national broadcast, because it's a rivalry game and they understand it. They'll tune into the Civil War between Oregon and Oregon State. And these are some of the longest-running rivalry games in the country, folks. They predate A&M and Texas playing football against each other. Right. They may not predate them playing football, but they all started around the same time. But I believe the Civil War between Oregon and Oregon State has been played over 100 times. They're appropriating that, that phrase now, Civil War. I'm not sure they should do that. <laughs> in fact, having I, I, I black wouldn't be, players I'm, on their team and talking I'm about I'm sure Civil there's War, a push I, in Portland to get rid I of it. I think that that's unfortunate. Fine I think folks that's at Corvallis have fought against that thing. Totally undermined. And the next thing you know, somehow you're offensive to the Jews and the folks in the Middle East. The whole thing smacks of white privilege. I don't appreciate it, and I wish it were gone. Fair enough. Okay. Now that you've got that out and your feelings are assaged for the time being, it's, it's not going all anywhere. about and my still, feelings. I will still refer to it as the Civil War. I don't care what there you think. There you go. There you, you don't care, no. and that's part of the problem. <laughs> that's, folks, what you just saw there was a, a sarcastic microcosm of the world we live in. Somebody, you see where I want to change gears on you. I, I heard about. I'm not promoting, nor have I read, the book Rising Star. The making of Barack Obama, by a gentleman named Ger David Garrow. In the book, Mr. Garrow points out things like, real quickly for you, he says one person who wasn't surprised by the fact that Barack Obama received four hundred thousand dollars for a speech to Cantor Fitzgerald employees was historian and author Professor David Garrow. Garrow, who has devoted the past nine years to working on his new biography, Rising Star, The Making of Barack Obama, says this is merely a direct continuation of the irritatingly hedonistic behavior that was begun during their time in the White House. He said, I think there's additional evidence to, con to this is additional evidence to the huge contrast to who he and Michelle were all the way until 2004. He points out they lived in a modest appoint, uh, apartment in Illinois and they'd struggled to pay off their student loan debt and that they were... Well, it's hard to pay off student loan debt when you're a community activist. Right, right? But, but, but that's Community organizer. Were. Says, until then, says Gary, the Obamas were very modest. What I started to notice during his presidency, and I did too, was we saw not only this old pa this odd pattern of playing golf every weekend, but we also saw his increasing obsession with Hollywood celebrities and well, musicians. He couldn't afford to play golf when he was trying when he was a community organizer. He invited all these celebrity types to the White House. When he was in the Illinois State Senate, he was very sensitive. He talked about immigrants collecting bottles and cans from garbage. He talked about hope and change, you'll recall. But then the hope and change happened for him, and he's fine. What's made the book... Hope and change was a slogan, much like Make America Great Again, except... Right. except... Except Trump did. Well, Trump had a plan. There was no... There was no meat behind the sizzle of hope and change. But a country fell for it because it sounded good. And then Canada followed with the election of Justin Trudeau. He came up with a smart little slogan. Hope and change also. Yeah. Eh? We also can hope and change. We can hope and change. We can hope and change too, eh? Hey, come on. Well, that's Bernanson. what happens when you get caught up with a charismatic leader. He is charismatic. Who doesn't have... Talks. See, he, many people find him charismatic. I always found him condescending. He talks with the cadence. Makes you stop and listen. The, the words 
don't matter because it's the way he says things. See, and I'm always waiting for the stuttering to start. I don't, the cadence throws me off. And the fact that he's very condescending is off-putting and is All why I've never liked Barack Obama and his policies and divisiveness Double are the down. reasons why I didn't like him and don't like him as president and think he's one of the worst presidents in the history of this country. Yeah. Period. He, um, not my 401k. Mr. Tomorrow, Garrow man. goes on to double down and, and does not hesitate, backs up with quotes from several sources that the president, former president. I'm guessing he didn't team up with Barack Obama in writing this one. No, but, <laughs> but, but exposes, discusses through several sources that Barack uh, fantasized about sex with men. I, I find that to be, you know, it, there's worse things. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know if there's worse things you could accuse him of, but I'm saying it's odd that you would accuse him of that because you can't prove it. But it does kind of give you some ideas to what he finds attractive about Michelle. So there you have that. Because she's a dude. Which is more likely, that he was actually born in Kenya or that she's a dude? Kenya. There you go. But here's the thing. Would anybody, honestly, I think, and the only reason Donald Trump didn't fall into some of those pitfalls or pits, suffer some of those pitfalls. <laughs> Women were so readily available. Why, well, when you're rich, you can just walk up and grab them? Yeah, well, no. But because he was rich, he wasn't enamored all of a sudden by those wanting access to him. Correct. Right? He was used to it. Now, all of a sudden, you're famous. Think about some... I mean, think about people you know that might know somebody famous. They're always clamoring to them. They're always making sure they're... In this day and age, their selfie is included with them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, I mean, it's... I mean, I can understand him falling for that stuff. Rita. But it certainly changed him. And, I mean... You would think for a guy that believes client, believes everything he told you for eight years as president, that the world is coming to an end, that climate change was going to make the seas rise. So real. And that Martha Vineyard would be underwater. It's happening. So why, in just common sense, would he go and buy a piece of property on Martha's Vineyard? It was... Two blocks off the <laughs> beach, and now it's going to be waterfront. Tell us what Amanda yeah. said right there. Good luck, Northeast Junior All-Stars. One one way to the championship. Play today at 1 o'clock uh, against the winner of New Mexico and Louisiana. Good luck, guys. Good job. There well done. Go. By the way, thank you, you folks. They, they thank you to you folks for helping them get there. Yeah. Keith Williams says, I believe Biden is the worst president we've ever had. Absolutely. I think he is, too. And I think Jimmy Carter probably falls in on a, on a number two, maybe. I don't know. There's probably some worse. There's it probably some worse ones if you go back. Uncanny how many of these Democrats really, really chime in. The convenience of believing. Oh, the economy. They just, uh, Kamala Harris put out a post yesterday that said <clears throat> uh, unemployment has been below 4% for the longest continuous period over the last 50 years under President Biden. Is unemployment at 4%? Two years, two days ago, 13.4 million jobs have been added to our economy on my watch. This is a, this is a tweet, or I don't, I don't know what you call okay. it anymore. An X. It's an X. A post by President Biden. More than any other president in a full four-year term. And heartening that our economy, our economic agenda is creating opportunity for working families. First of all, and this is the fallacy, and I continue to, and, and I, presidents don't create jobs. True story. Some of their policies may allow for jobs to be created. But in this case, where, according to economists, anywhere from 12 to 13 million jobs were shut down during the pandemic. COVID. Yeah. The pandemic. So if you're going to claim 13.4 million jobs and include the 12 to 13, and I'm using that just because no economists can't really agree on a number i think 12.8 is what i've heard the most but still 
10 of them were jobs coming back after COVID. No, I was like but, 12 to 13 or t- about t- 11 to 12 of them were jobs gone during COVID. Well, so at best, you've created 1.4 million. Or they've occurred naturally through yeah. the economy. Let me ask you this. And seniors are leaving the workforce. Well, we're getting old. When Trump took office and the economy, consumer confidence soared, and the economy started to skyrocket, the Democrats all, it was the party line. Well, that's just the lag effect of the great work of Barack Obama. Barack Obama, Barack Obama did this, Barack Obama did that. Trump's just benefiting from it. You'll notice that Joe Biden in no way is benefiting from any lag effect associated with Donald Trump's tremendous policies globally. We have zero foreign policy. The United States has no foreign policy. All we do is give money to foreign company, countries, companies. That's what they are, they're companies. Greg Garcia points out a very good fact. Unemployment's down because people are having to work more than one job to keep up with the Bidenomics. True story. I read, I read um, a headline yesterday. I didn't get a chance to read the article. Teacher in a northern state, Democrat state, imagine that. That's what they want. Just read the, read the uh, headline. Yeah. Well, they don't want you to read this headline because it, it's, it's not pretty. Teacher is working two additional jobs just to try to make ends meet. So basically working three jobs as a teacher to try to make ends meet. And lives in one of those blue, Democratic-controlled states that they say are the utopia and the place that you want to be. Mm, mm, mm. Yep. So they tell you things are great. The reality is it's not. Yet half the country still believes everything they're told. They have completely lost the ability to look at things with, with their eyes open and make judgments or decisions based on facts and, th- and their experiences. Because we have stopped teaching people how to critically think and make decisions and answers based on their own research and observations. Because if you're paying, you know, and, the, and the, this is the other one that, that, that last week came out. Well, employment or... Inflation's we're, we're we're reducing inflation, dude. It's still three percent year over year. My prices haven't come down to where they were pre Joe Biden, and then add three percent. I could live with that, right? But the fact that there's still three percent inflation on top of the nine percent, ten percent, six percent, eight percent. The fact that the Fed's still having to fetter the interest rates, just which I don't to think they're doing inflation. anything, they're not doing any good because the economy is running away. I think all your usual metrics no longer matter because if things were as bad as they are, the Dow Jones should be, and all the other indexes should be way down. Way down. They move things in and out. To keep the running average where they want it to be. Well, and I don't think people care anymore because they're used to paying thirty percent on a on a on a credit card, twenty percent on a HELOC, you know, fifteen percent on a personal loan. So they don't care. The fact that mortgage rates are now at seven percent, which is where they were in the, in in two thousand twenty three years ago, they're just like, oh well. And so many people have a mindset, well, I'm going to work till I die anyway, so who cares if I, if I save for retirement? So they don't care that their savings and, and retirement accounts are only making 6% because they, they either believe they're going to spend it all or they're going to work till they die. Till they die. Right. And so they don't care. There you have it. So, hey, look, if you want to spend some money, get by Great Barn Design. Get you can. Great we Barn open Mercantile. Today. Open on Mondays now. Ten-ish, you know. 
whenever Cheryl makes it in, probably about 10. It's she Canadian. Good, it's she Canadian. Had, she had a busy weekend. It was nice o'clock. to see folks come out. I think the fact that kids are starting back to school means people are back to shopping. 920-6803, go by, give her a call, ask her if she's got the accoutrement she's that got she a, wants. I believe she's got a Friday evening wedding this week. There you go. So not too many of those, but uh, she'll, she'll work any wedding or event that you have. She's got a birthday event today. She's busy this week. Good stuff. Ads and offers since 1926. All they do is sell cars and maintain cars, all makes and models, and paint cars. Sell them like candy bars. Inspect cars. Get by ads and offer right there on the Vero Motor Mile, just down the road from higher prices. Stacking them deep, selling them cheap. If selling you don't buy it today, like they'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, if you can buy your car somewhere else, but then you'd have to drive it. Go by and see them. And get service that has an offer. There you have it. Law offices of Steve Kidder. Steve Kidder can help you with all your legal needs and wranglings, prenuptial agreements, postnuptial agreements. Can you backdate that? <laughs> get with Steve Kidder. Let Steve Kidder help you navigate the tumultuous waters of downtown Victoria. Give you some karaoke advice as well. He can do it. He can do it. AJ's Detailing. Stop on by. Make an appointment. I don't Steve, think you're just going to be able to drive by and drop it off these days. He's Steve busy. Kidder and Christopher Walken <laughs> do karaoke together. Leaves us all yelling, more cowbell. Absolutely. AJ's detailing. Check him out on Facebook. To drown him out. This is what, so here we are. We're on the air. We're on the air every day for, what, seven years now? Yeah. This is what I get. Can you buy that good glass cleaner for windows and our mirrors in the house? It's from Dawn at, at 737. <laughs> Sure, honey. Thanks. Why don't I just call us, 894-4020. 894-4020, call us with your grocery list. What's on your list now that inflation's through the roof? What are you buying? You eating a little more chicken? Have you found the beauty of the pork steak? Now that beef's 16 bucks a pound for hamburger? Don't let that happen to you. Get by the chopping block. Let the chopping block help you on a Monday. It's probably Meatloaf Monday, is it? Yeah, good question. I don't, I don't know. know. But don't it doesn't know. matter. They it all matters. they're always it's serving all up good. something good in the trailer. And they've got great assortment of fresh meat, sausages, boudins, chicken, wrap, beef, stuffed pork. You'll like it all. Yeah. Get by there. The chopping great block. Stuff. Nord Navarro just inside the loop. So Ed Krasenstein is a guy that I follow on Twitter. X, whatever it's called nowadays. Huge liberal. Oh yeah. Paid, um, he's a paid promoter by the Democrats yeah, to, and he's, uh, he's, to put yeah, he's, garbage out there. And he, he does just like to troll. But he parrots a lot of talking points and, and things. But he said the judge at Trump's hearing told him not to try to influence jurors, and I think this was based on that, if you go after me, I'm coming after you tweet. Was that which, a smart thing to say? Probably not. Why would you do because that? Because you've been battling the weaponization of the DOJ and the FBI and if you're reelected, how else are you going to come after him, right? Steve Kidder says, you know you're doing good at karaoke when the DJ continues. He just steadily increases the background <laughs> vocals. Suspicious minds. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that, Steve. That's right. We were singing the background vocals when Ash was up there. Yeah, Donald Trump over the, yeah. over the week last week said, if you come after me, I'm coming after you, in all caps on What's left of Twitter? Well, I don't understand. The truth. I just don't understand. You can't threaten yourself out of this situation. I made the comment to well, Dawn. But he's trying to, he's, where does, where should a judge draw the line on this? Shouldn't there be a line drawn somewhere short of naming jurors or witnesses directly by name? Trying to, trying to bring this accused Donald Trump of, of jury, tampering. jury tampering already, which is, which is BS. It has nothing to do with jurors. How would you? How much would you hate to be chosen for that jury? You're going to be in there for like what about I don't know eight years. But then he asked this question: Does anyone really not believe that Trump would try and out the jurors if he found out the names of those who convicted him? He won't have to out them because every jury on these trials these days that are high profile out They'll themselves write a book. because they all try to make money off it and monetize their juror experience, which ought to be against the law. It should be that you're just you're just mum. About it from now on. And nobody's outing anybody. You go watch the trial. They're sitting there. There's 12 of them in a box. Maybe a couple alternates. You can see who they are. If you're from the community, you probably know a good portion of them. I agree with Stephanie Conti that he's more likely talking about the people that are coming after him, being the Democrats, being the Bidens, being the Biden crime family, than he is talking about yeah, individual no, absolutely. jurors. But 
he still shouldn't have done it. It's very difficult, even as a fan, if you will, to get away from the fact that Donald Trump is absolutely his own worst enemy. I just don't, I understand the brashness, the bravado, the arrogance is what makes him who he is, but it's also to his detriment. I mean, do you agree? Yeah. Bless his heart. You know, shut up, Donald. <laughs> and by the way, he's in a lot of trouble here. They don't have to prove very much to prove conspiracy. If they, no, it's one get, of those nebulous words that if you were just think, if we can just prove you were thinking about it, <laughs> that's right. You're guilty. If you knew at the federal level, if you knew, or if your position allows that you should have known, then you are liable. When you're the president, isn't it fairly arguable that you should have known? I mean, come on. He's in he's in some serious trouble. I don't know. Well, I, how much can you conspire when you asked how many times for National Guard presence and increased police at the Capitol on January 6th? I swear to you, I saw the other day a Democrat posted that Nancy Pelosi begged the National Guard to come and Donald Trump turned it down. And that is just a 180-degree lie. I remember Donald Trump saying, we need more security in D.C. Why, Mr. President? What are you threatening us with? The former, the former chief of the Capitol Police, who resigned in the wake of this, not because he was in trouble, because he was asked he for help. suicidal? Not yet. Okay. Okay. You know, so many of those Capitol Police, the trauma of helping those people walk through the Capitol led them to commit suicide. You know who those people were? They were the people that weren't compliant. When the when the Dems told him he need to go along with this, and I heard I heard over the weekend that of the twelve New York City police officers that saw Anthony Weiner's laptop, nine have committed suicide. You're telling me that that <clears throat> laptop was so traumatic, and the things on there were, gave you so much mental anguish, you couldn't go on with life. There's something there. Yeah, Peter it's, Inelli, look at what he's lying. done. He's referring to Biden. And replying to Keith Williams. Unemployment, low market, doing well, infrastructure gains, etc. You can't say he is the worst. No, I can't say he is the worst. Because He's the unemployment bad. is only because of the market bouncing back after things were shut down. And they fo- tried to force control and couldn't. The markets don't care anymore. It's not a reflection of any of his policies. Give me one policy. Give me one policy the man's implemented. The guy's a, dic- the guy's a dictator yeah. Pick- and doesn't believe in freedoms. You no longer yeah. have the freedom to, to choose certain incandescent light bulbs. They took that away from you, folks. Yeah. It's like the frog in the pot of boiling water. They turn it up so slowly you don't even notice. You don't even jump out but of it's, the water. It's, 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 I mean, and it may sound stupid. It's all. It's just a light bulb. It's only a forty-five watt light bulb. Eh, it's only a gas combustion engine car. It's, it's only I mean, a gas what stove. What do you care? It's only a gas stove. You don't really need to cook on gas, unless you're a chef in a restaurant. Guess what? When you really want that, well, we're going to tax you for that. <laughs> Hard to flambe stuff without it. Yeah, we're going to tax you for that. He's what infrastructure gains? We've had more de- train derailments. Remember all that money that was for infrastructure? Or as many train derailments as we've always had. Quick aside, there was a bad one in Pakistan this last weekend. 30 people dead, 90 deeply, deeply injured. So uh, prayers for the folks in Pakistan. It happens all over the world, although in this case, Donald Trump hasn't been blamed yet. Peter and Ali says, listen to the science. What science are we supposed to listen to? I have no Peter, idea what he's talking about. All the science they've touted is, is is just a bunch of BS and changes daily with the amount of money that they can monetize no off it and it. make from it. Well, let me ask you this. Did the you see over the weekend where Pfizer, Pfizer coming out with a new drug <laughs> yeah. to combat the alarming, they called it alarming spike in heart issues. Well, they're the... Spikes in heart issues caused by they and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson's vaccine. So now they're going, hey, we're going to create another drug to help you with that. Thank you, Pfizer. Well done. I don't believe in my heart 
I don't believe that Peter McNally really believes a lot of the stuff he tells us. I still I think he's don't, just trolling us on I do. I think he's just trying to keep the pot stirred to help the program. And thank you for that, Pete, because it's at your detriment. I mean, so many people just go, oh, my gosh, does Peter McNally really believe that? Can we get him some help? I don't know anything really, anything that's tangible that Joe Biden has really, quote, unquote, accomplished while being in office. I well, just, his I personal bank account has grown by tens of millions. So there's that. Yeah. Let's take our final break and get into the latest Russia-China taunting of the United States and our lack of response once again. Wendt Services, for all your backup generator needs, electrical needs, they can handle everything. Wendt's just awesome. They've done work for me. You should use them for no other reason than I told you to use them. Yeah, the folks at Wendt are so good. I had a a buddy with a family member who was looking at a quote for a generator in Galveston, and uh, the Wentz just said, well, send it over. Let me just review it, and they pointed out a couple of things and, and really assisted and to, for no gain, they didn't charge anybody anything. If you give them a call and say that you want to quote for a full house generator and tell them that Wade and Carter sent you, you will get their best work, and they'll be pleased to, to work for you. The folks at USA Concrete Coating, let them come out and transform your drab slab. Put down a nice, fresh coat on your garage floor, especially if you build a new house. Yeah. If you're building a new home, Get it done before you have to move all your stuff. Let them go in. Junior's going to do that. They're going to work on his floor. Clean it. Have it ready to go. White Trash Services, 550-1826. Whether you need weekly pickup in the county, if you need dumpsters or roll-offs, they can do those for you. Demolition Services, they're doing work in the city. See their signs in front of buildings that are being demoed or cleared out. White Trash Site Services, great folks, hard workers, and it's in the heat, and you don't have to do it yourself. Very fair and honest. Yeah. If you have a chance, if you're driving down Main Street here in Victoria and look to your right when you get to De Leon Plaza, you'll see there is a tremendous project going on there. They're building that new outdoor, it's not an amphitheater, it's an it's outdoor extension stage. Of, it's extension of De Leon Plaza. Super nice. I really, uh, it, it's, it's your tax dollars at work. It's probably some grant money at work. It's You'll be thrilled. If you go by, I think you'll love the work. And White Trash Service is leading the way. In that, and then of course, Armor Air five seven nine zero nine six six. Reach out to Ryan and his team. Let them come out and help you. Make sure the AC stays on when the heat goes up. You see this over the weekend here. The Philadelphia Phillies traded for a guy. You see him right here. He's sliding to third base, and his cell phone came out of his pocket. Oh Lord! My man's an outfielder. He's an infielder. Rodolfo Castro, great name for baseball. Rodolfo Castro, suspended for one game, was fined by MLB after a cell phone flew out of his pocket mid-slide in August. Very interesting. Well, which makes me wonder if Megan Rapino didn't go to her cell phone after, the, after regulation time and put a sizable bet on whether or not she was going to make or miss the penalty kick that she took that sailed over the net for the U.S. women. I mean, oh. didn't want. I didn't get up early to watch the game. No, nobody did. Well, a lot of, so like quite a few people did actually. But sailed it over the net, walked away smiling, which I don't fault her for. Because what else are you going to do, right? It's it's almost black comedy. You're, she's I mean, smiling you at missed the irony. It. Yes. It's over. It's her last game, and she's done, and she just screwed up. And I, you know, and, the and was she is, the best person to take that kick, or was it just her turn? I think it. No, I think it was. I think there was some. I don't think she was the best person to if take the best kick. Player Obviously, she missed years it. Old, you know, thirty-eight. It's time well, to which is part of the problem. Um, but this is a team, and I, I don't know that I've ever seen more Americans happy that a national team has lost. Right. Than what I see with the with the women's soccer national soccer team. This team has pissed off a lot of Americans, and I think doubled down a little bit when they asked Megan Rapinoe what 
her biggest accomplishment was as part of the women's national team. And what did she say? Equal pay. We now get equal pay with the men. Yeah. Fair enough. Big accomplishment. Whether Big or not it's, 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 it's deserve it. I, you know, I, I, I don't think so, to be honest. The men's team isn't losing to a bunch of 14-year-old boys soccer players when they gear up for the World Cup or the Olympics. Giving up. But if that's the biggest accomplishment that you have as a member of the soccer team. If it's not about winning, yeah. then you're not a champion to me. No, to absolutely. give Peter McNally equal time, I asked him, give me some things that Biden's done. His comment, quote, new highways. What new highways? Airports Seriously. modernized. Kept us safe. You feel safer? You feel safer what right now? What airports have been modernized? I've been traveling for years and yeah. airports None. that have been these these expansions None. and renovations at airports, they were started years ago. The planning and the and and the approvals needed by the FAA, it doesn't just happen overnight. These are things that go on. They've got to go get land. Oh. Forcibly probably have to They've done take more the land to modernize the Cabo San Lucas airport on the tip of the Baja Peninsula in, in my last three trips than they've done at any airport in this country in my lifetime. For Peter McNally to say that Joe Biden has kept us safe on the heels of the largest joint naval operation ever between China and Russia. If I tell you who are our two biggest enemies in the world and you don't say China and Russia, you're not, you're not thinking. And China and Russia brought a naval flotilla, the largest ever joint effort, 90 miles off the Aleutian Islands, right off the coast of Alaska. Now, you say, well, why is that important? It's important because it's worth noting that neither country, neither of those two superpowers needs to bring a boat anywhere to attack the U.S. So they didn't bring them. And they wouldn't. And they, they never entered right. territorial waters. And they did not bring the flotilla there to do anything other than A, intimidate, and B, expose the fact that much like the uh, dirigible with the cameras on it, we will do nothing. That's what they did. Now, the, the uh, North Pacific, whatever it is there, the Naval Command did send out, I think, five destroyers and some airplane cover, and uh, guided them back to international waters. But be aware that this was purely a smudge put on Joe Biden's face by foreign governments in concert. Peter Manasseh says, look at LaGuardia. I guarantee you those plans were no, started before they Biden ever took been. office. No been, doubt about it. I haven't traveled to New York in a few years, but they were doing things back then. Yeah. The taxi stands had moved, all sorts of stuff. LaGuardia has been a, a renovation that has been long needed and happening for a long time. Has nothing to do with this administration. No. In fact, I don't believe it had anything to do with the Trump administration. It probably goes back probably to Bush. probably goes back to Bush. Yeah. In the wake of 9-11, to be honest. Because yes. LaGuardia, from a security standpoint, was not built to handle the new security standards and measures that are put in place. It's small, cramped. Kansas City, same thing. But these but, things have been going on for years but because do you they remember, just happen overnight. Is it, is it just politics? Maybe other states are seeing benefits we don't see because we have Greg Abbott. But Obama promised... All, I mean, I'm sorry, Biden promised all kinds of huge infrastructure investments and that, folks, it's going to be great. It's going to be terrific. We are going to have this, that, and the other thing. It's coming. And none of it has happened. That's their military's no control of that exercise. But, Peter. Oh, they wouldn't have done that with, with Donald Trump in office. They sure didn't do it. Even Kim Jong-un quit firing off missiles when Trump was in office. It, you didn't hear them talking about um, invading South Korea when Trump was in office. Peter, yeah, I mean, you're just it not. Is their, it is their military, no doubt. We don't control their exercises. But where they do them is a direct reflection of the lack of respect that Amen. these two countries have for this country. Absolutely. And they know that there's going to be no response 
They floated a spy balloon that actually started in Alaska, went south through Canada. Right where we store all of our missiles. And entered the U.S. and went along basically all of our missile silos. Through Montana, the Dakotas, the Midwest, and then we shot it down outside the coast of North Carolina. Scott Tomko points out, if he had accomplished all that during this administration, you'd have a ton of projects like the Corpus <laughs> Christi Bridge. And that's a true story. I mean, there would be more of these types of things being done. I'll go a step further and say... Well, I think it, he's saying that they would have screwed it up like the Corpus Christi Bridge. Well, that may be I don't so. think that's the case. I, I, if that's the case, then we've got to blame Governor Abbott and TxDOT for this screw I don't disagree. I think it's a, it's a bad contract. If you've got all that money to use on infrastructure, why didn't the federal government swoop down and solve this problem in Corpus Christi, Texas? That is a pivotal deep water port. It is important. It is second only, I believe second only, to Houston in this state in, in stuff handled. Yeah, and I, Peter, so. I agree it's mostly state dollars, but... But there's also a complete lack of cooperation between the state and the feds uh, due to Abbott and Biden. And I, and I get that, too. And I'm not saying that's Biden's fault. Yep. Kidder says uh, Biden made sure that the Chinese Communist Party got all the info from that balloon that they needed before they oh, shut there's it no down. Doubt. Absolutely. There's no doubt. To claim there was more of a chance of hitting somebody on that Peter to the ocean off the Atlantic coast of North Carolina by shooting it down than there ever was by shooting it down over Montana, Montana or the Dakotas. They should have shot it down when they saw it, wherever it was. Yeah. Should have vaporized it. <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, really think about it. It's been a long time since we have plane crashes in this country, but most of them never hit anybody or land in populated areas because their flight plans are chosen so that they don't do that if they happen to go down. There was no chance of hurting anybody by shooting that thing down. I will tell you that until we get to the point where good American people, educated people like Pete McNally, solid American citizens, good people, until those people get to the point where they're over their Trump phobia or hatred to where they just, just, they Peter McNally. There's no way if Hunter Biden was his son, Peter McNally would string him up. But because he's not Donald Trump's son, anything he does is okay. I need my Democrat friends to come back to reality. The party of Kennedy, the politics of Clinton, Come back to fiscal responsibility. Come back to marriages between a man and a woman. Come back to something that resembles the rule of law and following the Constitution of the United States. And let's find a way to work together. I would argue that Clinton was the start of rules for thee, but not for me. I don't disagree with that, but at least fiscally, he was conservative, and he wasn't just giving a trillion here and a couple trillion there and doing stupid stuff. That we know of. He was paying off hookers and other women and no doubt never got it. never got impeached for it. True story. But until we get to the point where the Democrats have some outrage. He's only got at a the list Democrats, of kills longer than most hitmen. He does. Although I'm curious, um, as they pointed out, I am curious what happened to Barack Obama's chef. Official Very line is he drowned while paddle boarding. I'm sure he did. Cause you know just makes sense right you're gonna go paddleboard off martha's vineyard and you're not gonna wear a life jacket i I don't feel sorry for you i really don't no no i don't i never have felt bad for the guy i just think that there's more to the story possibly i don't know seeing the latest memes that are are are... well we'll get to that maybe tomorrow i just realized there you go time Folks, it is the top of the hour. You can't win the week if you don't win Monday. Please. You got to win Monday. Go work. U.S. Women's National Team won't win Monday. There you go. <laughs> hey, have a great day. Peter Rinaldi says Hunter's just a plain old drug addict. He needs a lot of rehab. 
Hey, there's Cadillac nothing. There's, rehab. He's there's 53 nothing. Three years old. There's nothing about just a plain old drug addict. This is a guy that is being used by his dad, willingly or not, with no ability cojones to stand up to his old man, and giving his man ten percent of everything. Think about it. His dad's the big guy. His dad. But if he's is getting a million bucks, he's still getting nine hundred thousand of that, and he's pissed off about it. That's right. He is the big guy. If it's not like he's think, the only Biden's one. Biden's the big yeah. guy and paying attention. He's not the one getting 10%. His dad is. Crazy town, folks. Hunter Biden's 53 years old, totally unqualified to hold a job. Buying weapons. Democrats don't care about that. Illegal. Have a great day, folks. Bye, folks. We ain't nothing, just good old boys.